Hey guys, in my last video, I showed you how to do some calculations to fill out a table like this based on just frequencies and means. And in this video, I plan to zoom in on just a couple of chunks of this, the cumulative percentage frequency and the cumulative income frequency. Oh, sorry, cumulative percentage of total income. Uh, yeah. Because those are the two things we need to build a Lorenz curve, to calculate a Gini coefficient, to help us with all kinds of stuff with measuring inequality. So, over here, I have started totally fresh. There's those two columns of that table. And then down below, uh, the textbook I'm using also rearranged that data and arranged it with cleaner percentage frequencies. So basically they rearranged it. So we captured everyone in this low group, everyone in the second group, and everyone in the first two percentage points of this 7% group are all now in the first decile. And they weighted and scaled their incomes so that we found that that first 10% had about 1% of the income. The next 20% of people had uh, added it to where the cumulative income was 3% and so on down. So those are the same thing. And I did the Lorenz curve and Gini coefficient for this one in class. So I'm going to do this one first uh, because it has nicer steps along the cumulative frequency amount. And then after I do that, I'll do this one to see what happens when I don't have when I don't rescale my data. So let's just for kicks and giggles. Let's just graph this thing. So I'm going to highlight the data, click insert, go to charts, do this scatter plot. I like having the lines there. Look at that. That, I mean, I guess I need to mess with my titles and stuff. So that's my Lorenz curve. Now I'm going to do some. Uh, quick work to format this thing. I'm gonna to go to chart design and I'm gonna to go to a quick layout just to pick something I like the looks of because uh, I wanna put the full labels in here. So this one's got access titles, I'm gonna delete that. And let's see, this is the cumulative percentage of families or frequency as the graph says and this one is the cumulative percentage of income all right and so these two things together make my Lorenz curve and we've talked a bit about how to interpret this for those of you who missed it uh, let me just explain a little bit this graph links people's incomes as a society to how many of them there are. So imagine we line up everybody from the poorest people are over here, the richest people are over here. And on this axis, we're measuring how much of the total pile of money do these people account for. So 0% of people account for 0% of the money. 10% of the people account for 1% of the money. 20% of the people account for 3% of the income. 30% of the people account for 7% of the income. And so on all the way up until we get 80% of the people accounting for 50, 90 for 67, 95 for 78, 99 for 91. And then finally, when you get 100% of the people, you get 100% of the income. Now, these graphs will often also have a 45 degree line, which means that the x-axis and the y-axis coordinates will be the same. And so this line, I'm gonna set equal to that, just for graphing sake. And let's adjust what data is in this graph, shall we? We'll go like that. Sweet. So we just added in this extra thing. Now this line is totally straight as a slope of one. 
And it measures what would happen if everybody had a proportionate amount of income. If the bottom 10% had 10% of the income, if the top 10% had just 10% of the income. So this orange line represents per, like complete equality. And the blue line represents where we are. Now, the farther the blue line gets from the orange line, whether that be something like, I don't know, maybe it looks more like it does, maybe it looks more like this. The farther it gets from that orange line, the poorer, sorry, the less of the relative income the poor people have, and the more of the income is concentrated at the top, right? We don't start climbing the cumulative percentage of income until we get to these super high incomes. So the flatter your Lorenz curve, the more it looks like this, the more equal you are, the more curved, the more unequal. All right. Now, the Gini coefficient, that is something extra. I'm going to add a couple of guidelines on here. I'm going to put a big bold line there and another one there. So it's a big triangle. Now, this triangle will always be the same no matter where your Lorenz curve is. You could be. You could have a Lorentz curve that looked like this, or one that looked like this. It doesn't really matter. This triangle will always be the same, which is helpful to us because it can give us a constant measure. And so we divide it into two groups, A and B. A is the area between the 45 degree line and the Lorentz curve. B is the area between the Lorentz curve and the rest of this triangle. And the preliminary Gini is this. Gini is equal to A divided by A plus B. That's the preliminary version. It tells us what ratio of that triangle is between the Lorenz curve and the 45 degree line. The smaller it is, the closer your Lorenz curve gets to that 45 degree line, the more equal your society. The bigger it is, the bigger that A chunk is, that means your Lorentz curve has to be lower and more curved. And that means you're more unequal. So high Ginnies have high inequality, low Ginnies have low inequality. All right, so how do we calculate this? So one option is, hey, I already gave you all the numbers. You can just do A over A plus B. I won't do that very often. The other option is the calculus approach. The area of this triangle minus the integral of everything under this blue line. But my class doesn't have a calculus prereq. So third option, and I'm borrowing this from my book. My textbook has this equation right here. G, it's Gini, equals one minus the sum of from I equals one to T of Fi times Zi minus one plus Zi. What is all that? Well, that is going to deal with a lot of geometry and trapezoids and all kinds of stuff. So back to this. What am I saying with trapezoids? Well, between each income group, there is a trapezoid, which can approximate the area under that line. Right? And I can repeat this for each income group. Each one has a trapezoid, which can tell us the area or an approximation of the area under the blue curve, and so on, all the way up. Now, I want to look at just this one. I'm going to pick a bigger one so it's easier to look at. So I can type next to it. So I'm going to pick one trapezoid, and I'm going to show you what those FIs and ZIs and ZI minus ones and all that. Okay, so what was the Fi? The Fi, it has to do with the frequency and is the base of that triangle, of that trapezoid. How wide is it? In this case, most of these ones are 10% wide, although the last couple 
5%, 4%, 1%. That's how wide the trapezoid is. Now, the ZI is the taller height, and the ZI minus 1 is the lower height. Okay, so in theory, if I were to add up the area of all of these trapezoids and subtract them from the area of that triangle, I could figure out how much stuff is in A and do some mathing and whatnot. And then it leads me to that equation. One minus the sum of all the Fi times Zi plus Zi minus one. So let's, let's do it, see what happens. I'm going to create a variable here, which for lack of a better term, I mean, I could call it trapezoids, but I'm not exactly using the trapezoid formula here. Uh, I'm going to call this the Fi Zi minus plus Zi minus one. Yeah, that's a very originally named one, huh? Okay, and so what's it going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to, uh, you won't have any for that first row when everything's zero, but for the second one, what's Fi? It's how much the cumulative distribution, cumulative, cumulative frequency has changed. Uh, in this case, uh, the first one's going to be 10%, the second one's going to be 10%, and so on. We keep adding 10%. And what about the... Zi plus Zi minus one. Well, that is the cumulative percentage of total income at the right-hand end of this trapezoid. Zi plus the one for Zi minus one, which is at the left-hand end of this trapezoid. Close that and boom. That's let's look. It's looking at the difference in this and the adding of those. Now, if it was, if I was actually looking for the area of trapezoids, I would technically divide that by two, but I'm just cutting to the end of the math, which builds to it. And so I'm not calling this trapezoids, I'm just calling it that. Now, I'm gonna repeat that for every single one of these. Now you'll notice these last ones, the base of it, the FI, is only gonna be 1% there. But the height, but we're adding a 91 and a 100 there. So they're all going to be a little different, but there we go. So we calculate all of those, and then we can get our Gini finally. And the Gini is, like I said, is equal to 1 minus the sum of all that stuff. Oops, I want them to be in a decimal form, so. You put that in a number, 0.46. Boom. By the way, quick side note, the United States has the highest Gini coefficient of any of the highly industrialized countries. Uh, you have to go to countries with significantly lower average income to find a country with as high of Gini. All right. Um, that's pretty much it. If that made sense, go ahead and turn off this video. But if not, I am going to also redo this for the original table, which wasn't cleaned up into nice deciles, but had all these crazy different cumulative percentage frequencies. All right. It's going to be the same idea. I'm going to have a trapezoid line, which isn't really trapezoids because I'm not dividing by two. Zi plus Z minus one, just from calling that column. And the Gini is gonna be something. All right, so all I gotta do, I mean, I'll do the calculations first and then we'll graph it and compare. But I just wanna show that the calculations are actually pretty easy. Uh, oops, I need a zero starting point. Hang on, I'm getting ahead of myself. We gotta have a zero to start with. All right, so is equal to the base, the Fi of each trapezoid area, 
is the cumulative percentage at the end minus the cumulative percentage at the beginning times the sum of its heights. Whoa, let's round that down. Hey, if you, again, if you don't like how many decimal places there are, you can tell Excel to do some rounding. All right, and let's drag that all the way down. Our Ginny is equal to one minus the sum of all those things. It should be pretty similar. It's a little bit different because of all the different uh, amounts of rounding and averaging and whatever, but 0.46 versus 0.47, it's the same data, it's telling the same story. Now, if I wanted to graph this, and I can, let's highlight those, and I could redo the graphing stuff. I'm not gonna do it all. You can if you want to, just for practice, but uh, it's the same thing, just with more dots because it's more brackets. Well, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful. If not, too bad. But good luck anyway. And I'll see you later.